morning guys oh am i too loud i know uh, false advertising you look at the poster that doesn't look anything like me <laughs> and no i didn't grow the beard in the last 2 or 3 months or whatever it's been a long time but anyways um i just remember about a year ago october 25th 2017 it was the day before my birthday born on 26th of october the year should not be mentioned <laughs> I was in Dubai. Uh, the world's largest mall is in Dubai. The Dubai Mall is huge. And I remember that it was uh, that night I was sitting there. You know like KLCC you've got this park outside with fountains and everything. So I was there and there's this big huge man-made lake um with a lot of fountains and I remember the fountains were dancing for this song from Skyfall, the James Bond movie. So crowded, a lot of tourists taking photographs, videos. But I just sat there at the bench. And I was looking at this tall tower this two times taller than KL tower the Burj Khalifa the world's tallest tower and I was thinking to myself what do I do next what's going to happen next you see at that point I was at Dubai for a selection process selection days for startups uh, it was a program called Smart City Dubai and our startup which I co-founded was shortlisted we were the top 20 in the world the only malaysian startup to go to dubai the top 10 would make it there to contribute towards building this smart city so it was already an achievement by itself to be the top 20 but just one week before flying to dubai just one week before that my co-founder called me up and he said he can't make it he pulled out and team is one of the most important things when you talk about startups and now i had no team so i went ahead to dubai everyone came all the other 19 startups came with their teams i was alone went ahead did what i had to do pitched i got recognized to have the best pitch it was so good that during lunch when every other startups were going finding their the opportunity to speak to an investor there were investors coming to me to my table Aruna loved the idea. I loved the product. Brilliant. How much do you need? You know when you are a startup to hear that from an investor is gold. That's what you want. But at that point I had no team. So it was very depressing. I had to be honest with him. I told him I can't. Right? And true enough the next day when they announced the top 10 startups that were going to be there in Dubai for the next so many months, we didn't make it. it's very painful you know because you've put in so much of effort and energy and you've reached to the point when you have a great product great idea a great platform and things just didn't fall through and that is why the next day the day before i was flying out i was at the mall sitting looking at the tower and just thinking what am i going to do next especially in such an age such a day and time when jobs can be replaced easily The world is changing the age of automation. How do you find how do you restart how do you think of what to do next? What would you do when you are at the brink of failure? I clearly failed. I had gone all the way to that point and yet could not go to the next stage. It's the age of automation people say. What is automation? It's one big buzzword. that's what it is automation everything is becoming automated the fourth industrial revolution artificial intelligence the internet of things blockchain bitcoin finance technology fintech energy is this so the list keeps growing by the day every day you log on to facebook you see this new company or linkedin you see this new startup announcing their idea and they never say it as a form of advancements that you need they always say it like as if they're solving your problem now you don't have to pick up the phone and call anymore because ai can do it for you it's almost as if it was a problem to begin with interesting you know that especially artificial intelligence to some extent you can think of it as the advancements of technology has kind of grown out of control a lot of negative impacts in the midst of all the positive advancements it's worrying But I think the biggest worry that most people have especially when I speak to people is the concern when it comes to what is going to happen to me in the age of automation 
in terms of my career, in terms of my job. If I am studying to be an engineer now, if I am studying to be a lawyer now, when I graduate, am I still relevant? Is my job going to be replaced? I tell you honestly, a lot of jobs are going to be replaced. That's the truth. Because AI is becoming better at what we do. Faster, cost efficient, cheaper. So what do we do? What do you do? Ask yourself. If you're studying right now, if you're planning to, to go to university and study and get a degree, are you able to get a job in the age of automation? And what do you do if you can't? I think we should start from rediscovering who we are and what makes us unique. As a human being, you are unique. There are a lot of things that machines can do, but there are a lot of things that machines cannot do that we'll never be able to do. For example, artificial intelligence, it can think, critical thinking, whatever you want to call it. Lah. But human beings are blessed with creative thinking, for instance. You can't get AI to be creative, because AI is data-driven. You start from a big data, big data, you take the AI algorithm and then you process whatever you want to do, all these complicated big buzzwords. And then what happens is the solution is becoming narrowed down, right? From big data, AI is getting to a point of optimized solution, a singularity point, the best possible outcome. So it's a converging process. It's getting narrowed and narrowed and narrowed. That is why when you go to Facebook, you, you keep seeing the same type of advertisements. Because the data about your search results, your browsing history, now gives AI a hint that that is what you want, and it keeps showing you the same kind of ads. Like when I went to Vietnam for my friend's wedding, I kept seeing advertisements about Vietnam. <laughs> that doesn't mean that my whole life is revolving around Vietnam, but I don't know why Facebook thinks so, right? That's how AI works. But human beings can do the exact opposite. You and I, we can sit by the beach, look at the sunset, the cool wind, the breeze just blowing through your face and the waves, the splash of the water, the best possible evening. And you can be inspired to write a song. You can work purely through inspiration. That's something machines cannot. You can start from a point of nothing and think of something. That is something so unique that only a human being can do. What more? Machines, can, machines have intelligence, artificial intelligence, but it's intelligent. In some ways, it is more intelligent than, human, than us ourselves. But we have emotional intelligence. We are able to show compassion, to love one another, to care for one another, to lead, to serve, to understand, to tolerate. Things like these machines cannot do. There's a lot of things that are so unique about us that we are not working on them. We're giving them up. A mentor once told me, you should not waste too much time working on your weaknesses. Build on your strength. Figure out what is unique about you and I and build on that. You know, it all boils down to this. We have to move, we have to rewire the way we think from a profession-oriented thinking to a purpose-oriented thinking. Instead of looking at everything in terms of a job, I'm going to do a degree to get a job, retire at this age, read newspapers by the beach or the farmhouse or whatever, that's not, that life is more than that. Think of it in terms of purpose and, and why purpose? Because purpose is like a destination if you look at life as a journey. I mean, if you look at journey, right? a journey is only a journey if it involves a destination. Without a destination, you're just lost. I mean, imagine you're driving Federal Highway. Hey, bro, I, I saw you in the Federal Highway. Like, where are you going? You seem to be heading towards KL. Where are you going? Uh, don't know. Don't know, lah. Just go wherever the road takes me, lah. I mean, that's weird, right? You're just lost. I mean, that's the same thing with life. If life is a journey, where is your destination? What is your purpose? Because otherwise, you're just walking around aimlessly, wasting time, resources, and not going anywhere. 
purpose, a purpose-driven life. And that is the very thing that got me through that day in Dubai. Because at that point of failure, I had to sit and look and think, what am I going to do next? It took me some time to finally realize, hey, this is not who I am. I am more than this. I have a purpose. My life is anchored to a purpose. My life is not limited to a profession. It was not limited to that startup venture. It was driven by purpose. And that is why I'm, I was able to come back, not give up, and do other things, and stand here speaking to you today. Because I found my purpose. And if you don't find your purpose, you can easily get discouraged when things go bad. And believe me, things can go real bad. You will be surprised with the kind of things that artificial intelligence can do. Automation in general. And how do you find this purpose? You start by finding truth. Because purpose is defined by truth. Purpose is built on truth. I'll give you an example. I've got a friend of mine. You know, earlier I, I talked about you know, driving aimlessly and not going anywhere. I got a friend of mine once, wanted to go somewhere, had it all planned out. He wanted to go to somewhere in Shalam, MSU or something. And he was calling, hey bro, how to go to MSU? He had a purpose, he had a destination. Right. Uh, okay, where are you now? Okay, I'm in Laboraya Prasakutuan, bro. How do I go from here? Okay, now you're on the federal highway, right? Just keep going. Bro, 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 bro. I'm not on the federal highway. I am on Laboraya Prasakutuan. It's the same thing. <laughs> Malay and English. He had no basics, no knowledge. He knew where he wanted to go, but he didn't know how to get there. He had a purpose, but no truth. Think about it. Like, you know, if you, imagine you right now, if you had no idea about the universe, you had no clue about what the solar system is made of, you just know there are stars and planets in the sky, and one day someone told you, hey, what is your purpose? Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Ah, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. I will one day walk on the sun. Grand purpose, right? Ambitious. But it doesn't make sense. It's just not going to happen. So purpose without truth is ignorance. Purpose without truth is ignorance. And how do you find truth? What is truth? I mean, purpose is something you build for the future, towards the future. You can't build anything moving forward if you first don't know what has happened before. You can't build a future without recognizing the past. History. Because if you don't know history and you're walking into future, you're going to be repeating mistakes that you, should, you could have avoided. And what is the best way to know that? Well, how do you know history? How do you know truth? How do you know what works, what has worked? How do we do things in a certain way to get a certain outcome? Google it, please. No. <laughs> We are relying too much on Google. Google is great, by the way, but we need more. Read the books, yeah. But what is the best, one of the most powerful way to learn, to discover, is through conversations, which today is kind of missing. Because we've been blessed with the most powerful communication tool the mouth. All we have to do is speak. But what do we do? We rather use our thumbs to communicate. So much so that we've come to a place where if it is not for technology, we cannot communicate. Really? The kind of goal that you can get out of a conversation, especially with someone who's been through life, is amazing. You can't get that in books. You can't get that in Google. You can't get them in a classroom. I'll give you an example. I had a mentor before. I did my internship in an engineering firm some years ago, a Japanese firm. So his name, my mentor's name was Sakata, Sakata Mr. Sakata. So in Japanese, they call him Sakata-san, right? Sakata-san. 70-year-old, 70-plus-year-old young uh, old man who was very energetic, came all the way from Japan to supervise us on our projects. And I was an intern, a 22, 23-year-old intern, right? He spoke very little English very little English. Most of what he was trying to say always ended up as an expression. Sakata-san, did you have breakfast? Oh! 
What did you have for breakfast? Oh, bread, butter. So one day we were given a task, right? As an intern, I had to do most of it. And at, at some point we realized that half of what we did was wrong. We had to redo it and we were preparing these tags for the parts that we had built. And there were like thousands of those tags. So we had to manually write with a marker pen on these tags, the codes, right? And we used a red color marker pen. Sakatasan walks in. Oh, Guta. Red color, no Guta. Sakatasan, why? Red color, no good. No Guta. So he persisted that we stopped and changed it. What we did was we read the whole thing, and the next day I asked him, Sakatasan, why you don't like red color? He looks at me, takes a tag, and says, Kama. He tied the red tag to the, to the lamppost. Two days later, come see. Two days later, when I went and saw the tag, the color red had faded under the sun. At that point, I learned that red color fades the fastest under the sun. Four years of engineering never taught me that. The amount of Googling never taught me, research papers never taught me that. A conversation with someone who's been through life taught me something so valuable like that. Imagine, what are you missing today because of the conversations you are not having? These are people the generations before us who've been through life, they've been to world wars, communism, they've built the civilization that you and I stand on today. Learn, speak, get the stories, get the wisdom, find truth, find your purpose, and when your life is anchored upon a purpose, you're like a ship in a storm anchored to the ground. You may move, but you're never lost. You will always overcome. And in leaving, I just want to leave you with one thought. If you are going through life, find a mentor to help you navigate through it. And if you have been through life, find a mentee and teach. Thank you.